So at the start of the year, I was working with my team on an issue we were seeing in Tableau Public. We were seeing some errors in some of the components that we own. From time to time, things would look a little weird. So we got some data, we asked some questions, we had a hunch, turned out that wasn't right. So we got some more data, we asked some more questions, and after about a week, we had figured out the problem. We were pretty excited, because we actually figured out more than just our problem. We had figured out something a little more broad, it applied to more of the services that we run, uh, and we were excited to show our results. So the next week, we had a meeting put together, and like, my boss was there, the head of engineering was there, our VPs were there. Uh, you know, I was really excited to show off the great work my team had done in the week. And so I walk into the meeting, and I put up on the screen something that essentially looks like this. And it was a disaster. So for the next seven minutes, instead of talking about like, the great work that my team had done and all the insights we had found, I was like reading labels to the people in the back of the room or explaining what axes meant. And I realized I had fallen into kind of this trap, this fallacy, um, and that what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the one dashboard, the one view of my data that's going to be the source of truth. And while this is really kind of a compelling thing to do, it sounds like a great idea, it actually makes your job a lot harder than it needs to be. My name's Dan Leventhal, and in the next oh, half an hour to an hour, we're going to talk about how your data speaks to different audiences and how you can actually make your job easier by making different views on that data that speak to each of those audiences. So a lot of organizations have some kind of key metrics or numbers that they're trying to move forward. If you're in a sales organization, you're trying to close sales and uh, hit a quota. If you're in an engineering organization like mine, maybe you're trying to keep your bug rates low or reduce the number of errors that you're seeing in a system or something like that. Now, this is not the only thing our teams are trying to do, but it's some number that a lot of people care about. So again, it's kind of tempting to think that, like, great, there's some number, a lot of people care about it, I'm going to create one dashboard that just works for everyone. And there's a lot of great things about that idea. One, it's a single source of truth. Everyone knows what it is, everyone knows where to look, everyone knows where to find it. You can, like, email the link around, great. Everyone's looking at the same thing, having the same conversation. The downside of that is that it never quite works. The data kind of has way too much detail for the high-level view or people who aren't in that part of the organization, or it doesn't have enough information for the people who are actually trying to do the work and move things forward. So I've come slowly to this idea that eh, one dashboard's the wrong way to go. Now it's, I'll create one data source and then I'll create views of that data to meet different audiences and provide what they need. So we're going to talk about the kind of three canonical audiences for your data. We're going to talk about building the right views for each audience, and taking a, then I'm going to go a little bit into taking advantage of some of the features Tableau offers to bring data into the conversation and into some of the workflows you have around data. So for any key metric, I'm going to argue that there are kind of roughly three audiences. Now, your organization might differ, but it usually falls into some bucket like this. There's a high-level uh, kind of view, and the easy people to think about there are organizational heads or execs. But there's also people outside of your organization who might be interested in it and don't just have all of the context to understand the details. The key thing that you want to get there is, is the number good for some definition of good? Or are you on track? Again, it's like, is the organization on track? If great, we can move on. Then there's the mid-level, which I really think of as being uh, for middle managers. Now, I myself am a middle manager. I don't think of that as like a bad thing. I like to think that I do something useful. Uh, but the kind of questions that I have is, how's my team doing? Are we on track? Is anything falling through the cracks? Where should we focus our, our attention? And then there's the lower level, for the people who are you know, actually doing the work and moving the ball forward. How much detail can we give them? What can we do to, what data can we give them to make progress on their work? So I'm gonna make it a little bit more concrete with an engineering example, and then I'll talk about another example in a minute. For a high level, um, the engineering 
the head of engineering might care about what is the error rate for our services? How's public doing? How's Tableau Online doing? At that mid-level, for a manager, you know, I care about what are the components that my team owns? Are they working correctly? What's the error rates in my area? And then for specific engineers on my team, they want to know everything about a specific incident. If the number of errors goes up a lot, they want to know what was happening right before that, how many users are affected, are there specific machines that are having problems? How can we give them everything th that we can so that they can make progress and get the job done? I'm going to make another example from sales. Now, I'm not in a sales organization, so if I'm wrong here, please give me kind of benefit of the doubt on that. Um, but kind of at a high level, there's some obvious people like the head of sales. There's also people just outside of the organization. So I'm not in our sales organization, but I still want to know kind of how's sales doing? How's the quota going? Excuse me, how's the quarter going? At a mid-level, you maybe have regional managers who want to know are, how's their team doing against their quota? Are there areas or people on the team who need help? And then at an individual level, you have salespeople who are trying to close specific deals, move conversations forward about a customer. So they want history, history with that customer, um, any communication or notes that you've had, and kind of everything we can give them about that customer. So those are kind of the, some examples throughout organizations. The next thing I talk about kind of how you think about building these dashboards and building these views. So for that high-level dashboard, the big question you're trying to get at are, are things on track? And there are a few design considerations when I go into building a view like this. The first is kind of where this view is going to be viewed. And that might seem silly, but um, with these kind of high-level things, you're often shown in an email or someone cop took a screenshot on a projector like this or maybe in front of a big meeting. Um, or sometimes on a mobile device. For those reasons, you often want to make the text big and legible. And the way that I figure this out, and it seems silly, but I actually will put it up in a conference room. We have a bunch that are similar. And then I'll go to the back of the room and make sure I can read it. It's really easy if you're in a conference room to like, just focus in on your computer where everything is very legible. But if the person in the back of the room can't read it, it doesn't really make sense. Then I try to keep it simple, just a couple of charts to really get a point across and add meaningful labels. And this is one that is easy to look over, but I can't tell you how many axes I've seen where the label for the axis just says value. And it's kind of hard to know what that means. Um, the next thing I say is test it. So I'm in software. It is rare that I write code and it works the first time. It's really hard to get things right the first time. So for this, it's actually relatively easy. You can find someone in another department or a little bit outside of your circle who can take a look at what you've built, maybe ask them some simple questions. Do they think that things are going well or not? How do they understand the chart? And so you don't necessarily need to get the opinion of some exec in order to understand if that view makes sense to a higher level or to people who don't have the same context. Bringing it down a level to that mid-level view, we have different des design considerations. Uh, I work with a lot of managers. We're often in meetings, and everyone in a meeting has a laptop. So whenever I think about that kind of mid-level view, I'm designing for someone who is probably working on a laptop. As if I create a dashboard that's way too big, it doesn't really make sense for that audience. Um, some of the key questions I want to know are, how does my contribution of my teams or the teams around me add up to the whole? So are we, if the, uh, what, what my team is doing is a small fraction of the bigger picture or a large fraction, that's going to change how I want to prioritize my work. And then the other thing that I want to know is, is there anything falling through a cracks? So an example for me is if there's a bug that's uh, on my team but not assigned to a person, it's unlikely that anyone's going to go fix that bug. So I've created a few views that I expect to be empty, and when there's something in there, it, it's a good alert for me to know I should go do something about it. Again, it's important to test this, so I'll find another manager, so maybe someone on a team next to mine, and ask some simple questions by showing the same view filtered to their team and ask things like, how's your team doing? What do you think is missing from this? Or what do you think is on here that's actually not needed? And finally, for that task level view, it starts to get really specific. 
you want to get a specific job done or help people get a specific job done. In this case, it could be viewed on a desktop or a laptop or maybe an iPad. Depends on how your organization works and the people within it. Um, you want to see what information you can put on there that can help someone move the job forward. Again, you want to test it out. Show this to someone working on a project. Is this the information they need? What else is useful? The other thing that often comes up here is what links or external resources can you just provide a couple links for them because, hey, they're always going to this external site. So there are small things like that that can help people in their workflow become a little bit more efficient. OK, I kind of talked at some vagaries. I'm going to go to a dashboard and get a little bit more specific about all this. So here's a dashboard. Oh, apologies. Great. Here's a dashboard that I built where I've tried to uh, kind of do an example of these three levels. Now, I built this from the Superstore data set, which comes with Tableau. So I it is fake data, but I thought it might be something that people were familiar with. The specifics of the views are not the most exciting part. What I think is really interesting here is just the concepts and some of the design considerations. So here I have a kind of a high-level overview of our sales. You can see the current quarter here, 2018 Q4, and we're in the middle of it. I've highlighted the quota in this reference line here. And then down below, I have a similar view shifted a little bit, and I have the same quota target highlighted here. Now I'm going to go to a kind of a regional overview. This is a lot more detail. And in my hypothetical sales situation, uh, I'm going to say that each manager has a different region. So here, the manager can go in and filter to the region that's of interest to them. Finally, I have kind of an individual customer point of view. And you can see that I'm getting much more specific about things. Uh, in this example, I'm looking at things like um, how, the, how long orders take in the shipment mode depends on sales. And so created things where I can select some marks and then see the details about past orders on the right here. That maybe is useful in terms of moving something forward with a new account or understanding a previous issue. I'm going to come back to that kind of overview dashboard, because I think this is one where a lot of people uh, don't fully uh, take the time to optimize this dashboard for the design that's needed. So on the bottom viz, I've actually already increased some of the fonts so that they're easier to read in the back of the room. I'm going to go through and actually do that to the top view as well, just to see how to do it in various places. So for this reference line, for instance, I can click on it, format. I'm going to change the number format to currency, remove the decimal places, and change the units to thousands. The other thing I'm going to do is I've noticed that all the fonts are a little bit too small, so I can just right click, go to format, and here I can change the fonts for uh, all the fonts for the specific viz. So that's a little bit better, hopefully easier to read for those of you in that top tier back there. One thing I still don't like is this axis has way too many zeros on it, so I'm going to do something similar, edit this, change the number formatting to a custom, remove the decimal places, and change the units to thousands. So this is starting to look a little bit better. I can maybe see it in more places. Close this. One, one issue with the dashboard, though, is it's still pretty wide on my screen. And I have a decent computer, but some people are going to be viewing this on a smaller screen. So I'm actually going to change this to um, something a little smaller, just so that it's more likely to look good when people go to view it. I still think it's a little tall, so I'm actually going to modify the height down to 700 pixels. And starting to fit. One thing I don't like here, though, is I've added a scroll bar. So I'm going to select this viz, and I'm going to change it to fit height. So in this case, what it's done is it will squish the visualization so that it fits in this space. It's not necessarily the only way to fix that kind of issue, but it's just something that worked well for my consideration. 
So the next thing that I'm going to look at is some of the labels. Uh, this day of Q might make sense to some people who think about quarters a lot. Uh, in engineering, we don't always. So I'm just going to go do a quick modification to that by double clicking and give it a better name. OK, so that's a little bit more readable. The other label that I'm not sure about is this running sum of sales. Mm, it could probably be a little shorter. I don't know. I don't have a great idea, though. So actually, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave it. And then if I show it to a few people and they're confused or have a better idea, I'm just going to incorporate that later. I don't have to be perfect the first time. I can treat this as a draft. OK. So that's just a quick run through of how you can make a, a dashboard more accessible to that kind of high level view. Next, I want to go over kind of some of the other features in Tableau that help you bring this data into the conversation and make, uh, apologize, oh, and optimize it for better screen sizes. So I'm actually going to go touch on a bunch of topics at a somewhat high level here. But there are more talks throughout the rest of the conference that go into all of these at a greater depth. One of the things that uh, we talk about on my team is if you don't know about a feature, it's hard to go learn more about it. So we want to kind of just touch on some things at a high level. The first thing is that you can um, make mobile views. So you can customize the layout of dashboards so that when people go view it on a phone or an iPad or some other tablet, that it will look good for that device. And that's great for consuming data on the go. Uh, the next is something called customized views. So if you often go to the same uh, dashboard and you make the same changes to filters, then you can actually save that state so you can reuse it easily. We're gonna, I'm going to show you a little bit about alerting so that Tableau will email you when something interesting happens. Uh, and then also show you subscriptions so that you can get data delivered to your inbox, say, every Monday morning before you start your day. And then I'll also talk about commenting, where you can have a discussion about data right in place. OK. And so with that, let's go take a look. So the first thing I'm going to do is make a phone layout for this view. So these kind of high-level views are often the kind of thing that someone wants to do a quick check See if everything's good. And if it is, great, you can move on. It's great for looking at something on a phone. To do that, I'm going to go click on Device Preview. And this gives me uh, something we call Device Designer. In here, I can look at what my dashboard will look like on different device types. Here, I can select a device for a desktop, a tablet, or a phone layout. I'm looking at phone. And then I can also select a specific phone if I want to optimize the dashboard just for that specific phone. In this case, I'm actually just going to pick a generic phone layout. Now I'm going to click the Add Phone Layout button. And Tableau will automatically try to relay out my dashboard so it works well on a phone. At this point, if I like what I have, great. I can be done. If I don't like it, I can start modifying the dashboard as I think makes sense for this layout device. So here, I actually feel pretty good about it, and I'm going to publish it to my server. Now I'm going to switch over to my other computer, which has wired internet. <laughs> so cooking show style, <laughs> I have actually published. <laughs> the dashboard we were just looking at to a server. And I'm going to refresh it just to make sure that things are actually loaded the way I think they should be. OK. Great. So. Uh, I've created a mobile layout, and I've published my view. Now if someone looks at this uh, overview viz on their phone, they'll see something that looks a lot better for their mobile device. Okay. At this point, I'm going to go over and look at the, overview, the uh, regional overview for the different regions. Here I can filter down to the region of interest. 
And in this case, I'm going to say that I'm, let's say I am the manager for, that's looking over the east region. Every time I come to this view, the first thing I'm going to want to do is go filter down to the region that I care about. So Tableau actually has a feature to make this easier. It's called custom views. In this case, I've set up the filter the way that I think is interesting, set to east, and I can come over here to this view button and click on that. Now I can create a custom view. I'm just going to call it east. And I can also make it the default. So whenever I come to this dashboard, it automat for me, it goes to this view. If other people go, they'll still see the normal default view. I'm also going to make this custom view public in case people on my team want to see this dashboard the same way that I see it. So I'll select that and hit Save. Again, now every time I come back to this dashboard, I'll see it the way I left it. I'll also, if you've noticed, the URL has actually changed. So if I want to email this around to other people, they can see this dashboard the exact same way that I'm seeing it now. Another piece that comes to mind is I'm, I'm noticing that something's going on in New York. The count of different product names seems particularly high. So I could go and write an email to someone and talk about it there. But uh, one of Tableau's features that we call commenting allows me to have that conversation right here in the dashboard. So I'm going to go up to comments and open that up. Now I can click this button in the bottom which will bring in a picture of the dashboard that I care about. And I can start typing a message here. So I can say, hi, Craig. What's going on in New York? And when I click post, what will happen is Craig will actually get an email, because I've put an at mention in front of him. And he'll, he'll get this picture, and he'll be able to look at the data, click through, and come back here if he wants. So he could reply right here in the dashboard with that data. OK. I found what was interesting. I'm going to move along. The other thing that I care about with this dashboard is that this is actually data that I'm going to come back to over and over again. And it'd be nice if I actually didn't have to come here. So what I'm going to do is set it up so that Tableau sends me this data every Monday morning so I have it to start my week. In order to do that, I'm going to set up a subscription. So I'm going to click Subscribe and set the schedule to be weekly. I usually get to work around 8 AM, sometimes a little earlier. So I'm going to have it send it to me around 7.15. And I'm just going to have it send on Monday. Done. And here, I'm, I could choose to subscribe other people. In this case, I'm just going to subscribe myself and hit Subscribe. So now, every Monday morning, I'll show up, and I'll know where things are going in my organization. Or sorry, on my teams. OK. I'm going to come back to that overview viz, because I actually want a little bit more information. Sure, I know how my team's doing, but I want to know when the overall organization hits our target. So what I want to do is set up an alert so that when we hit quota, again, Tableau will send me an email to let me know where we are. So in this case, I'm going to filter down just to the current quarter, then select the axis that I'm interested in, and click Alert. Here I can set the threshold to be what the quota is, and have it only send me an email once. While I'm excited, I don't need an email every day. And create the alert. OK. So now, whenever we hit our sales quota for this quarter, I'll get an email. The last thing that I'm going to show here is that when I have these kind of high-level views, sometimes if I'm in a meeting, I want to get rid of all the stuff around the outside. And so whenever I present something like this, I'll often use the full screen button in the top left right, to get everything out of the way and make my data front and center. This, again, helps with the conversation and helps people know what we're focusing on. OK. So what we've just gone over pretty quickly is a number of features to bring the data into the conversation. 
custom views help you create a specific view of the data that you can come back to over and over again and save filter state. Alerts have Tableau send you email when something interesting happened. Subscriptions allow you to bring data into your inbox every day or every hour. Commenting is a way to help you have a conversation about the data right in place, right next to your dashboard, so you don't have to go off into another system. And then full screen is just a great way to get rid of the distractions. So what we've gone over is talked about how building one dashboard to do everything, while it sounds like a great idea and it's an exciting way to go, actually makes the problem a lot harder than it needs to be. Creating different views for different audiences makes it easier to meet people where they are. Tableau also offers a lot to bring data into the conversation and to help you with your workflows. Uh, and then the last thing that I kind of want to leave you with is just encourage folks to build into your process some notion of trying something out, testing it, incorporating feedback. It's one of those things where you can get really excited about making the perfect dashboard the first time. But if you can put out something that's not quite perfect and get the feedback, you'll get to that great dashboard a lot faster. So I want to thank you for your time. I'm happy to take some questions now. I'll be here afterwards. And I'll also be at the Tableau Doctor Minute Clinic for the rest of the conference.